I do love disc golf and it's such a wonderful day to play. My accuracy is terrible today. Maybe if I throw it a bit harder. Hickory here. Hey Professor, I was calling to ask about something for a lesson, but I forgot you were at Frisbee Golf. How's that going? Uh, not too good. I'm throwing like I'm a Zubat, and they don't have eyes or arms. Jeez, that's too bad. What do you think you're doing wrong? I don't know. I'm throwing as hard as I can, and I can't hit the target. I tried throwing even harder, and I missed even more. Professor, you know power isn't always the best option. Just look at a hydro pump. You remember what you taught me about double battles, right? Duh? I suppose you're right. You know, I think I have an idea for a lesson. Hey students, welcome back to the Bridge 4 Games Pokemon VGC Academy. Today we're talking about one of the core concepts of the VGC format, and that is power versus accuracy. Now have you ever noticed that some Pokemon moves aren't 100% accurate? It'd be nice if Pokemon moves always hit all the time with no possibility of missing, but it doesn't really work out that way. Some Pokemon moves can have as low as 30% accuracy, which means 70% of the time you're going to miss. Now usually these moves tend to be very, very strong or have a particular reason that they're inaccurate. There also are usually options that have a little bit less power but much higher accuracy, making them a bit more reliable. Now when we take a look at the singles competitive metagame, the format that's used on Smogon, the attitude is usually... More power! Right, more power. Oh, oh, oh. Now in singles, a move with 70% accuracy isn't that big of a deal as long as the power is there. As long as the move can do good damage, people are going to use it. But what about in VGC? Well, I know the perfect person to tell you all about it. Our very own Professor Hickory. Thanks, Blaine. As we all know, Pokemon Single Battles are a much different animal than Pokemon Double Battles, the format for VGC, the video game championship. Now in Pokemon Singles, it's not the end of the world if a move misses now and then. Pokemon Single players tend to focus on hitting as hard as possible every single time. But when it comes to Pokemon VGC Battles, there's a handy little acronym that can help you summarize the way most players think. And that acronym is DUH. Don't use Hydro. Pump. In this case, Hydro Pump meaning any move with less than 100% accuracy. So what's different when it comes to VGC? Well, let's take a look. Why I'm not there. It's just what it is. He's just saying, I, I, I assume that's what... <gasps> he missed the Hydro Pump. Oh my god, he missed the Hydro Pump, chat. He missed the Hydro Pump. Oh my god. Oh my god. Miss. Oh my god. Miss. Yes. See that? Mr. Magoo can hit more Pokemon than Hydro Pump. But you're probably asking yourself, well, Hydro Pump still misses in singles sometimes. What's the big deal? As we've said before in the Academy, in Pokemon Single Battles, you only need to accept the possibility of being hit from the opposing Pokemon once per turn. However, in VGC, because it is a double format, there is the possibility that your Pokemon could take two hits in one turn. It's simple logic that in singles, less damage is being put out per turn. This is why a Pokemon like Toxapex is a perfect Pokemon for singles. It can easily take a damage from one Pokemon and recover all the way back up, making it a ban-worthy Pokemon. However, it can't really take two hits and recover in the same fashion, which is why it is all but unplayable in Pokemon VGC. The same is true of the strategy when you're attacking. In singles, only one Pokemon can hit you at one time. So because there's less damage, it's not the end of the world if a move misses now and then. But remember that in VGC, it is doubles, meaning two versus two. The possibilities of being doubled up on are very, very substantial. Therefore, spending one turn doing nothing because of a miss is one of the most critical errors you could possibly make in VGC. A turn where nothing is accomplished not only allows your opponent to pull further ahead without losing anything themselves, but additionally is an open invitation for your opponent to hit your Pokemon as hard as possible, allowing them to take out your Mon without any sort of fear of retaliation. This is further compounded in a format where we have Megas, Z-moves, or Gigantamax, or Dynamax, because these moves hit even harder and never miss themselves, meaning that if you do miss for your turn and don't do anything, you're set even further back than you already would have been by a simple double up. This is why you'll find that in VGC, players tend to opt for accuracy over power, assuming the power of that move was enough to justify using it in the first place. Now you may think, 70% accuracy isn't too bad. After all, it should hit 7 out of 10 times, correct? Well, in theory, yes. However, any VGC player can tell you that it rarely works out that way, and you never want to be caught with your pants down when that 30% accuracy miss comes rearing its ugly head. Now you're probably asking yourself, Wait a minute, Professor. I've seen Hydro Pump, 
Sleep Powder, and even Cheer Cold on Pokemon and VGC. What's the deal? That is actually a very good question. Now bear in mind that in Pokemon, anything is really possible. There are players who decide to use moves with shaky accuracy, but there is a specific reason why they would choose to do so. Players may choose to use moves like Sleep Powder or Will-O-Wisp that are not 100% accurate, but the upside of connecting with the move is so dramatic. Rather than simply doing damage, you can cut the opposing Pokemon's attack in half, or you could even put the opposing Pokemon to sleep. Do you remember when we were talking about how devastating it can be to do nothing in a turn? Well, imagine having several turns of your Pokemon being asleep, doing nothing, all because it caught a face full of powder and can't get out of bed. When it comes to Mons using a high power move with low accuracy, there's also typically a specific reason for that as well. If a Pokemon has mediocre offensive stats and mediocre damage output and serves as more of a supporting Pokemon, players may opt for the higher damage dealing move regardless of the accuracy due to the fact that the Mon simply can't put out that much damage, so the move needs to hit as hard as possible in the event that the Mon would attack for that turn. This is a way of using the additional damage from the move to offset the mediocre stats of the initial Pokemon. Alternatively, there may be a specific calculation that a player needs for a given event. If a particular Pokemon is showing up in the meta, various players have different strategies for how to deal with that, and there are certain times when you need the higher power move to ensure a KO on a Pokemon. Players will go into events fully aware of the limitations of their plan given the accuracy and choose to do it anyway because it is crucial to their plan for the event. And keep in mind that we live in the Dynamax era of Pokemon right now. These moves never miss, so many times with a Pokemon designed for Dynamaxing, the name of the game is... <laughs> and you'll likely see players opting for these highly powerful, medium accuracy moves in order to get the most out of their max moves. The bottom line is that really you can use any move on any Pokemon and be successful, but you need a contingency plan in place for when these moves don't connect. Except Mudsport. Never use Mudsport. It's useless! But when you're just getting into VGC or building a new team with Mons where you haven't run the calculations for every scenario yet, aim for moves with better accuracy and a little bit less power. Typically that means you'll hit more often and deal more damage in the long run, which is always a good thing. Your Pokemon partners will definitely thank you when you're KOing an opposing Pokemon and they're not taking an attack to the head. So remember these two sayings next time you're building a team. Duh, for don't use Hydro, uh, Pump, and my personal favorite, Ariados, for accuracy really is a doorway to overt success. Back to you, Blaine. Thanks, Professor. I appreciate your new acronym, but I think I'm gonna stick with Duh. I'm not the biggest fan of spiders. Anyway, students, thank you so much for being here for another lesson at the Bridge 4 Games Pokemon VGC Academy. If you guys like this video, please make sure that you give it a like and share it with anybody you know looking to get into VGC. The goal of our series here on the channel is to make VGC accessible to new players and to make it enjoyable for everybody. We hear time and time again that the barrier to get into VGC is huge, and our goal here is to make that barrier smaller and smaller with every single video that we produce. Keep in mind, if you want to enroll in the VGC Academy yourself, you're in luck! We always have open enrollments here. All you need to do is subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you never miss an episode. That's all we have for you today. Thank you so much for being here, and we will see you next time in class.